Hi, Charles is a Book Sage here, and this is my first impressions of the Honor Harrington series by David Weber. This is a very long-running space opera series. Uh, I believe there's something like 32 books overall, uh, maybe 14 in the main series, and there's some a couple of prequel series, some sub-series, apparently, whatever sub-series are. But um, I'm reading like the main Honor Harrington series. And I've read the first five books. I actually recently started book six. This is kind of my first impressions of this series. Honor Harrington is the main character. She is David Weber's basically Horatio Hornblower. This series is inspired by Horatio Hornblower series, which was inspired, I guess, by Lord Nelson. The setup here is Honor Harrington is the sort of a rising star in the Royal Manticore Navy. Uh, the Manticore star system is a binary star system that's small in size in general, but very powerful um, economically and militarily. Uh, they spend a lot of their money making sure that they're more technologically advanced than the surrounding star systems because they're located in such a strategic place that they know they have to be more advanced because um, they just don't have the sheer numbers that other star systems do. The series we follow Honor Harrington where in the first book she becomes a captain of an actual legitimate military ship for the first time and I think we're following like 20 years in her career uh, from this first real command to wherever she's going to end up at the end of the series. So to give a quick breakdown here, Mandacore is where she's from. She's from this planet Sphinx so she's a little larger and stronger because uh, Sphinx is a uh, a higher gravity and she comes from uh, a line of people from Sphinx who have some gene genetic manipulation in their past and her mother's ancestry is Asian because this story takes place about 2,000 years in our future so even though Earth isn't there at least it hasn't isn't there yet I don't know if it makes an appearance at all but these are pretty much descendants from originally I would assume from Earth. And so you get some of their characteristics, physical characteristics, some traditions and things that still exist um, 2,000 years later. And one of the really interesting things about this series is it's very detailed. If you like um, a story, a space opera story, that you know gets into here's the different classifications of military vessels, and here's their capabilities, and here's the kind of weapon systems and engines each one has, and what the differences between them are, then this is the series for you. If you like detailed battles, like kind of blow-by-blow -blow naval battles, but in space, then this also is a series for you. Because David Weber, he gets down into those details. And when naval battles do occur, it's not a fight to someone gets a bloody nose. It's to the death. These are super high stakes here. So you might have a um, five Manicoran ships um, being attacked by eight Haven ships. And by the end of this battle, there's maybe one or two Manicoran ships left, maybe no Haven ships, or one has like broke off from the battle to get the hell out of there. That kind of stuff. So we're talking thousands and thousands of people die in these battles. Honor Harrington is a captain now, and she excels at this stuff. She lives for that kind of battle. And she's very driven personality. She wants to be the best. She wants to out strategize and out think and out maneuver whoever she's coming up against with uh, against Haven. And she builds this reputation where she becomes very feared um, by the Haven Navy because they know if she's the captain they're up against that the odds aren't too good for them. But there's huge losses on both sides. And and Harrington will sacrifice ships to win that battle. So she'll, she's, she'll make those decisions knowing that she's sending thousands of people to their deaths. But if she doesn't, then every single one of them in all the ships they've got are going to die. So it's really, it's really on the edge of your seat stuff. And again, it is kind of Horatio Hornblower in space. Horatio Hornblower, HH, Honor Harrington, HH. So there's nods there. And both characters are kind of nods to um, Lord Nelson, I believe. One way to look at it is Manticore is like Imperial Britain. And the People's Republic of Haven would be like Napoleon, Napoleonic France, with some Soviet Union thrown in. And it's that kind of setup. Now, what makes Manticore sort of unique is in space, you have these sort of gravity waves. So 
while ships can travel at um, faster than light speeds, it's not like Star Wars or Star Trek where it's just jump into hyperspace or warp drive. You have to sail to one of these gravity bands, gravity waves, and then unfurl these Wachowski sails. It's a sp special kind of sail, an engine, I believe, that lets hyperspace travel uh, work. You have to make sure you don't get your Wachowski sails damaged. So they're usually, un they're usually kept enclosed, and you only unfurl them when you're entering the hyper, the gravity waves. And then there you can jump onto one of those waves and off you go. So I believe the bigger the ship, the bigger the sails, the bigger the engines, the more powerful it is, can travel at a higher gravity band and get there. So theoretically you can jump into hyperspace to escape, but the other ship being bigger and stronger can then jump into hyperspace after you, but get to where you're going first if they know where you're actually going because they have the bigger, faster ship. And there's also these wormholes that exist. And that's similar to Star Trek where these are become important strategic junctions. Um, a junction is when there's more than one wormhole present. So you might end up with this one part of um, space, there's two wormholes in proximity to each other. And wormhole A goes to star system A, wormhole B goes to star system B. So whoever actually controls that space where those two wormholes exist, gives them a lot of strategic power and economic power because there's going to be taxes. You know, you want to come into our space from your wormhole to go into that wormhole to their space, you're going to pay us money. Otherwise, we're not letting you through. And Manticore has like six wormholes in this massive conjunction. It seems like all of the trade from all these other star systems all has to pass through Manticore in space at some point, which means Manticore makes money. The more they trade with each other, the more money Manticore makes in taxes and all those things. So it makes Manticore's star system a very coveted system, um, which is why Manticore spends a lot of time and money making sure that their military is technologically superior because they are smaller in numbers but more advanced because Haven wants that territory for themselves, other star systems want that territory for themselves. So it's a really interesting political and economic dynamic here and thrown into the midst of it is Honor Harrington. Now again, I'm only, f I'm early on in book six, so this is only a, a few years out of this like 20 year timeline I think this series takes place over. One of the things that I expect is there's probably gonna be a lot of changes happening to this political landscape overall. It would be kind of a boring series if it was no major cataclysmic tectonic political shifts took place. I'm assuming there's probably gonna be a, uh, an enemy out there somewhere that's probably going to take these adversaries and make them team up to each other. You know, those kinds of things are expected. Otherwise, it's just going to be very rote and rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, which would just get very stale. And so far in the first five books, there's been enough of a variety where it's not stale at all. And it's really interesting. And I'm still really early on. I've also been reading the Vorkosigan saga. And I actually have the first episode of this first impression series is my thoughts on Vorkosigan. And you'll find that in the cards at the end of the video. If I were to compare the two, even though these aren't really accurate comparisons, I'll just do it anyway. Vorkosigan would be like your Star Wars-y, more swashbuckling. And Harrington would be your Star Trek, where it's more technical, more detailed, more down into the weeds and all that kind of stuff. So if you like that really technical, nitty-gritty stuff, then this is a good series for you. If you're looking for a strong female lead in a space opera setting, then this is definitely the series for you. There's some trigger warnings in this series, uh, so just to be aware of, but it's really well done. It's, can be, it can be brutal at points because nobody gets out of this thing unscathed. There are deep wounds here, physical and mental and things that Honor deals with as her story progresses. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where this series is going to go. There's already some interesting political aspects happening here with Harrington and her career, where um, she doesn't like politics. She's Navy, fight, that's what she wants. But it's inevitable and unavoidable. So uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing where that path takes her, because at some point she's going to become a power player on the political side. Uh, right now, she's becoming a power player on the military side, because it's early in the series. But, you know, I expect she's going to end up playing that political role as well at some point. That's kind of my first impressions. Uh, really good, hard-hitting series, great female character. There's a tree cat as well, I forgot to mention, where there are these sort of cat-like race. Uh, they've got like six limbs or something, and they're very intelligent, and occasionally one will sort of mentally bond 
with a person. And I think it uh, takes place on Sphinx, which is the planet in Manticore where Honor's from. So her tree cat is called Nimitz, after the naval commander uh, here in the U.S. back in the day. Nimitz is a really cool character and adds another layer to Honor's uh, as a character as well. Because of that bond she has, the tree cat and her emotions, they kind of get intermingled sometimes. And tree cat's a good gauge of people she meets. So I'm really curious to see where that is going to go and how that bond is going to work in the future and what it's going to accomplish. But so far, really cool. So that is it. That is my first impressions of Honor Harrington. Have you read the series? Um, let me know down below. Are you interested in reading this series? Again, it's very more on the Star Trek side, Horatio Hornblower side. So if you like those naval battles and that you know political intrigue and, and trade and wars and all this stuff, then this is a series. And it's not solely Harrington as the POV. It jumps around. Harrington is the main character. All right, my camera cut off on me there. So, like I said, really technical stuff, detailed in terms of ships, speeds, engines, weapon systems. So if you like all of that kind of stuff, more, like I said, more on the Star Trek-y side, then give this series a try. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm really looking forward to continuing uh, to work my way through this series. And once I'm done with the main storyline, I'll figure out then where I want to go whether I want to dive into the prequels or sub-series and everything, because there's, there's so many books here now. So far, so good. Really enjoying it. Out of the first five books, there's been one five-star read so far, too, which, interestingly enough, was the only book of the five that didn't have a big naval space battle. But it was a very personal story for Harrington. So that's my first impressions of Honor Harrington. I'm enjoying it so far quite a bit, and I look forward to it continuing and eventually finishing this series. I am Charles of Book Sage. Happy reading. <laughs>